does mixing matter? It's a great question. I've asked it myself uh, many times over the years. Um, I'm Jack Stratton. I've mixed uh, most of Wolfpack's catalog and uh, really nothing else. No one, no one hires me. But uh, you might like Wolfpack. You like might like my mixing. I have a sound. I've been told. But does it matter? You know, really. I mean, should everything be a tiny desk concert with a Sennheiser mic uh, pointed? Just documentary style, you know, is that is that what's going to last the longest, you know? Uh, Alan Lomax going to last longer than uh, Skrillex, um, you know? Uh, is, is mixing more flavor of the month or is it going to cement you in the immutable ledger of art? Uh, these are very difficult questions and uh, I want to demonstrate the answer to this question uh, with a song. I'm Coming Out uh, by Diana Ross. We all love this song and I've loved it my whole life. Let's, let's throw this on. It's a great mix. It's dancey, it's powerful. I've loved that song my whole life. And then Nile Rodgers, the producer and guitarist, along with Bernard Edwards, um, but Nile Rodgers started doing a lot of interviews uh, a couple years ago, and he started talking about that song. And he said, that's not our mix. He said, uh, we did a mix and I've actually read that uh, Diana Ross thought it sounded too much like Chic, like his band. So uh, she took the tapes to Detroit, back to Motown, to do the Motown mix. And that was released, and that was a smash. And I thought to myself, wow, I would love to hear that original mix. And lo and behold, uh, it was put out on a compilation Years later, the, sh the original Chic mix. Let's hear that. Already different. You tell me. You tell me. But I think that is a heavier mix. That's that's that is the Bob Clear Mountain mix. Okay, Bob Clear Mountain was the mix engineer on that, and I I prefer that mix. But guess what? The original mix was a hit, and I loved it my whole life. I never even heard the Chic mix. Sorry, the Motown mix. And this was well into my mixing career, and it actually. It actually took a load off because you're sitting there obsessing. And the truth is, if you got joy in the performance, great performers, great song, and you can hear hear everything, you know, you, you, it, the mix the mix almost becomes secondary to the performance. However, if they did put out the sheet mix, it might be even better you know it, it would have it would have hit me on another level so does mixing matter the answer is yes it's the most important thing okay and the answer is no it's the least important thing it's both this is a duality okay you have to you have to somehow hold this duality as you're mixing so you don't obsess too much and like think that it's great because of the mixer it's bad and this duality that you want to hold I call it the Ronson Gabe Roth duality okay you can hold all of this within yourself at once okay I'm referring to 
the smash hit rehab amy winehouse let's let's bring that up they tried to make me go to rehab i said no 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 yes i've been black but when i come back no 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 i ain't got the time and if my very very crunchy no no yes i've been If you're my age, you remember when that came on the radio, and it it messed you up because it was in a period of time where you you know you couldn't get stuff to sound like an old sample, and that's what attracted one of the producers, Mark Ronson, to that studio where he had Gabe Roth, who is an unbelievable producer engineer. Uh, had his band uh, play essentially that song. And you, you got this, it's a sound like a sample, but then Mark Ronson took that and mixed it to be like a pop track. So Gabe Roth is, you know, obsessed with this old sound and the tape and really doing that for real. And he had the musicians, Homer Steinway's on, 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 uh, on drums. And Ronson was, you know, bringing the Pro Tools element. And they don't necessarily see eye to eye on that. I've heard Gabe Roth talk about how, you know, it's not his... Like, if you listen to Sharon Jones, this is the Gabe Roth sound. <laughs> So yeah, that is not, I doubt is touching a computer until it's uploaded to uh, whatever streaming service. So, so I, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here listening to this and saying, I want to embody the Gabe Roth and, and the Mark Ronson. You know, you can, you can do both, you know? This is the duality of mixing. It's the most important thing. It's the least important thing. Can you handle that? Okay. I'm no guru with a beard. I'm no Rick Rubin up here telling you I don't know how to do anything, okay? But I know that. That's pretty crazy, okay? And you, if you're interested in experimenting with the, that duality, I mean, you're, you're, you're darn near losing your mind because you're going to be questioning yourself. You're going to say, be saying, um, am I too pop? Am I too, do I hate pop? Do I hate computers? Do I love tape? Do I hate tape? You know, same things happening visually now too with film, but I, for, for better or worse, have committed to the computer just to keep a light, light footprint. I don't have any real tape, but I've, I've experimented with, with tape. We've had engineers do tape and this, this question continues so many examples of this question. Well, you'll, you'll, I mean, I used to spend so much time on mixes and now it's like, this is either interesting or it's not, you know, and it's pretty quick. And, you know, you age, your preferences change. Jeff Emmerich, the keeper of the sound of the Beatles, I would argue, um, blasted onto the scene with Revolver, just blasted. And obviously, Sergeant Pepper had a drum sound that, you know, every, everyone, that changed music, that drum sound. And uh, further, when we're talking about a mixing masterclass, we're talking about drums, okay? Drums are what, pff, drums are moving everything. I love bass. I love guitar. I love vocals. The history of breakthroughs in mixing, it's the history of drums, Okay, but I'm aging, I'm mellowing out, you know, and I'm swimming underwater. I'm swimming underwater. I wear bone conduction headphones underwater. Okay, 
these are very cool. They vibrate against your skull. I, I put in these Speedo, the Speedo swimmers earplugs, which are essential. And then this is a great uh, Speedo goggle. I, I, the brand Speedo is very good. And I, this is interesting. I'm listening to mixes underwater and I've been drawn almost by accident to Rubber Soul. Can you believe that? Say the word, you'll be free. You have to do Say this. You're a mix engineer. You have to get underwater with these couple products. It's a drug. It's a drug. Norman Smith actually taught Jeff Emmerich. Am I? I'm screaming. I'm screaming. Uh, Jeff Emmerich learned from Norman Smith at Abbey Road Studios, and Norman took the Beatles up to Rubber Soul. That was that was the last album, and. I mean, any mix nerd you're going to talk to, it's about Jeff Emmerich. I, I, even that Beatles doc that came out, Emmerich was out of the picture, and I was like, yeah, I, you know, I can't even hang, which is a little ridiculous, you know, because you know, th this is the question. Does mixing matter? These keepers of the sound, um, how essential are they? And as I'm aging, freaking rubber soul is becoming my jam underwater. I'll take it over the Emmerich era stuff. I, I can't explain why, but you know, when when Jeff Emmerich took over from Norman Smith, he moved the mics closer to Ringo and thus changed, you know, and left everything else, all the preamps and tubes at the same level and moved the mics closer, which was like illegal at the time. And uh, then you got that pumping sound from Ringo and you could tell I, I, I'm still questioning these things. Um, I, if you had talked to me five years ago, I was Jeff Emmerich the whole way, the whole way. That was the sound of the Beatles to me. And now I'm, I'm going back. So it's very, it's a fluid dynamic. These things are not set. 